Welcome to Inspire and Move, the show that inspires you to create, connect, and grow. I'm going to bring you meaningful conversations, aha moments, and all the motivation you need to up-level every part of your life. I'm Ali Aruda, founder of Inspire and Move, and your personal hype girl. I've gone from fashion school, to celebrity stylist, to corporate marketing, to brick and mortar entrepreneurship with my husband, each time learning incredible lessons how to pivot, reimagine, and implement the steps to become successful. I am passionate about inspiring others to live their best life, a life of joy. We have the power to design a life that we love because life is too short not to. The best part is that you weren't meant to do this alone. If you feel like you were meant for more, let me ride shotgun with you and together, let's get you to where you want to go. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Inspire and Move. I am your host, Ali Aruda, and I just got home from a super incredible experience, a first for me. Today, I had the absolute honor and pleasure of being a part of an incredible event hosted by Porsche Center Oakville. It is a Porsche store that is not far from where we live, actually. And they hosted this incredible event that was all about women inspiring women, which you know I am all about. And I had the pleasure of being one of five women on a panel that we were, man, we were such a diverse group in terms of what our background was. I don't even want to go to, to the extent of saying, you know, what our education is, but how we all kind of move through entrepreneurship, our life challenges, where we were from. It was just really interesting. And it's such an incredible group of women that I got to be a part of. And I am just so grateful for the opportunity. Matt and I were just having a cocktail together and kind of debriefing on the experience. And I am so grateful for this. This was so new to me. And it was a very much a Q&A format on a panel. And I had a lot of fun. And I am really in this season of trying new things. Obviously, here we are on a podcast. You guys know how much I am enjoying this and how much fun I'm having. So I've also had an opportunity to be able to speak on a panel at this incredible event with, you know, hundred plus women in this beautiful setting was such a treat. And I thought it would be really, really appropriate to hop on here and just share a couple of key takeaways. And I actually even have my notes beside me of some of the questions that we went through on the panel. And at one point I was like, maybe I should go through and like a Q and A by myself of what we talked about. But then I thought maybe that'd be boring for you guys. And I want to ensure I'm always providing value and being respectful of your time. That's why I love doing these little quickies by myself that I feel like they're really time appropriate. If you're you know, taking your dog for a walk or walking from home to the gym or to work, whatever your lifestyle might be. And so where I wanted to start was to really talk about the catalyst of what got you, and this is, I'm saying you in terms of, you know, if you were in the room with us today at the event, they wanted to know what was the catalyst to how you started, where you, where you got to. And when I first read this question, I had a a different perception, but then kind of chatted through it over coffee this morning with Matt and came up with a different answer. And what I wanted to share was that the catalyst for me, I think, is also knowing that failure is not an option and jumping before you're ready. And you guys know I love when opportunity knocks answering that that door, that calling. And I, I think having that grit and that courage of jumping before you're ready is really powerful and really flipping exciting because you don't even know what's on that other side. So jumping when you're not ready, but you're going to jump anyways, and trusting your gut, trusting your intuition. Now, any of you girls listening, I feel like, you know, we as females, we have some pretty powerful gut feelings and intuitions. Mine recently has been on Fuego. And I, it is really awesome to be able to just kind of connect to that and trust that and then see how that plays out. So there is total merit in trusting those big, powerful gut feelings. If that's a little takeaway for you guys, take that away. Got feelings, they are important, they are powerful, listen to them and honor them. But also knowing if you are going to jump before you're ready, yeah, it's scary. And I've been hearing this really awesome analogy when it comes to that big, big capital F word, fear, and the difference between having fear in the passenger seat of your journey and having it in the driver's seat. We want to move fear from the driver's seat to the passenger seat. And then maybe we eventually want to kick fear out of the car. 
and fear can go pitch heck. You know what I mean? So jumping before you're ready, trusting your gut, following those big intuitive feelings, and just know that failure is not an option. You are going to succeed. It might be messy. It might be a, an adventure, a journey, but failure is not an option. Now, one of the next things they talked about was community. And we had sort of a different discussion in terms of, you know, some of us panelists. And I want to, instead of going kind of detail by detail about the event with you guys, I want to chat more about community as a whole. And that is something that I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with. That is a big pillar. It is actually the biggest pillar for how Matt and I run our business, Benchmark Fitness, our gym in downtown Burlington, Ontario, or brick and mortar. So we are all about community and how we make people feel when they walk through our doors at the gym and what they're a part of. But also a big part of Inspire and Move is community. And I love doing events and connecting like-minded women with each other. Maybe you need a new friend. Maybe you need a lot of friends. Maybe you just moved to a new city. And so you are craving that community and that connection. And that was actually a big piece. And I, I did share a little bit about that, not even so much on the panel today, but we had this beautiful lunch before we stepped into the event and it allowed us as panelists, the event hosts to have some really incredible deep conversations and community naturally came up in that. And I was saying how when Matt and I, I obviously have gone on a very turbulent journey as gym owners over the last four years. And when we first closed our gym for the, the first closure in the pandemic, we really leaned on our community and we actually ended up closing four times. And that was a big part of our experience on those not so awesome times, those darker times when we were closed, but the connection we had to our community and knowing that this is not permanent. Yes, this sucks right now. And it is so not ideal, but it is not for forever. And that isn't even a important thing to take away about hard times that it is not forever. And I even shared a little bit today on a, a vulnerability note, how at, at one point in the pandemic and the gym being closed, I also lost my dad. And that is where I ended up at rock bottom. And the thing about rock bottom, what is very powerful about rock bottom is there's only one way to go from there. And guess what direction that is? It's up. You can only go up from there. And it might be a bit of a, you know, a gritty climb. It's going to be messy. Maybe you'll climb, you'll fall down, you'll climb, you'll fall down. But then you're going to keep clawing your way out. And then on the other side will be that beautiful, like self-discovery and that growth. And that is what is so remarkable about these gritty journeys is that they, they are character building. They, they build this extra muscle and this layer of strength that you can get through hard times. And it was really incredible to have that conversation with these other spectacular women on the panel in terms of, you know, someone was sharing about divorce. Someone was sharing about a, a really dark postpartum journey. Everybody has different journeys, but how you work through them and also knowing that grit and grace are two very powerful components to those journeys. And then we kind of dove into a good chat about your support system and how, you know, community, as I just mentioned, is a big part of that. But then deeper in the community is that support system that's maybe, you know, three to five to 10 really remarkable individuals that are in your corner. And they are there for you through the good times and the hard times. But one of the things I was saying today is a really awesome thing about that support circle is when they're there to celebrate your wins. And I had a friend there today that she wasn't really planning on coming, but she saw the event on Instagram. She didn't have a, a super busy day and was able to carve out a few hours to come. And she sat in the front row. She took photos and videos. And it was just so nice to see her face in the front row. And man, that felt good. This is a relatively new friend. She is part of our community at the gym and part of the Inspire and Move community with events. And if she's listening to this, you know who you are. But it was just so nice to be able to feel that energy and someone that genuinely wants to see you rise and wants to celebrate you shining your light on others and sharing your experiences, your stories, vulnerability. That is where I think that support circle is extra magical is, you know, yes, when they can give you a shoulder, if you're shedding a tear and they can give you the best hug ever when you need it and they can just listen. But if they are also there to celebrate you 
in some of your highest moments, that's a really special person. And we had some really great conversations surrounding that. And I, I'm so excited for you, for all of you as you listen to this and you think about those people and you identify them. Maybe, you know, hit pause on this podcast right now, on this episode, and send them a voice note. Tell them how much you love and appreciate them. Because those little notes, especially a voice note when you can hear their energy and their love and their gratitude for you, that means so much. Matt was saying that he actually did that today himself when I was at this event, how he you know, sent a voice note to this friend because he just wanted him to know how much he appreciates him and opportunities that have come up in, in Matt's life as a result of this friend. And those things are just so easy to do. You know, I feel like it's the modern day love note, thank you note. I grew up with pen pals and I mean, I guess depending how old you are listening to this, you might be like, what is a pen pal? But when you used to write cards and letters and send them to friends and you, you know, you had to wait for them to receive your card or letter, and then you had to wait to receive one on the other end. Now we have technology at our fingertips and it is so easy to express this love and gratitude for people that are in your corner, in your circle, or that you just love and appreciate. So hit pause, send a little love and gratitude now, and then come back and listen to the rest of the episode because well, it's short and sweet, but high vibe. And lastly, we talked about what would we tell our younger self? And that was so fun to see because we were a variety of ages and stages of life, but it was really fun to see kind of how we interpreted this question and what we shared. And lucky me, I got to go first, which is always kind of scary because you're like, how am I interpreting this question compared to everybody else? But I interpreted it as something that I would love to share with young Allie that the importance of personal development is such a game changer. And unfortunately, it is not really something that, at least when I grew up, now it's been a number of years since I've been in the traditional school system or university, but personal development wasn't really a subject. You know, we had social studies, English, math, languages, but being able to dive into the world of personal development as young as you are, or depending on where you are, I would start there. And that was my advice to myself is start from an inexpensive standpoint. Listen to podcasts. They're free. Then you could graduate to books and maybe you're investing anywhere from 10 to $30, depending on the book that you're going to choose. Then maybe you go to a course. Then you go to a one-day event or a two-day event, a mastermind. But investing in Areas where you can grow and expand your, your mind, your heart, your energy, your network. You hear so often that your network is your net worth. And I believe that everybody has a network and everybody needs a network. And we always need to build it because we're always chasing new opportunities and dreams and goals and plans. And what are you working towards? And all of that also comes from that personal development journey. Again, this isn't my opinion. This was my vision to myself. My advice to my younger self is investing in personal development. And you guys know I love talking about investing in rooms and that's a whole whole piece of this. But investing in things, just start small. And if this is really new for you, that's exciting. Congratulations. Welcome to the journey. Get ready to just be lit up because it is so awesome to literally feel yourself expanding and being a different person. I am such a different person now because of personal development than I was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And I look forward to being even a, a different person in one to five years because it is this journey of self-discovery and self-mastery. And oh my gosh, you guys, it, it's, it's awesome. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's exciting. It's awesome. It's powerful. And I'm excited for you. So I promised this was going to be quick because Matt is making dinner and I have a glass of wine to enjoy. So I'm just going to leave you with a lot of love and gratitude. Thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for being here. If you have not yet had the opportunity to drop a little love on the rating front, I would so appreciate a five-star review or some words of encouragement and love and appreciation. If you are enjoying the show, thank you so much. I wish you all mwah, a lovely evening, day, morning, wherever it is for you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And until next time. Thank you so much for listening. If you love this episode, it would mean the world to me if you took 30 seconds and shared this on social media, send it to a friend, or leave a five-star review. There is power in community, and I am so grateful to have you part of mine. 